Marge Long here at Gaylord Area Council for the Arts. This video is brought to you by a grant from Community Financial Credit Union, and it was a grant that came from their Summer of Sharing um, grant series. In this video, we're going to look at some creature anatomy, and so we're going to be using some handouts and drawing some um, creatures. We're going to draw an insect, an amphibian, and a mammal. So in your kit, I did include a dragonfly handout. And I like to use handouts a lot just to figure out the basic anatomy uh, of, of how things are laid out. So you can see in this handout, there's a head, there's a thorax, there's the abdomen. And it's really helpful to draw these. In fact, I'm gonna come back to this to figure out some of the veining in the wings on this dragonfly. Um, the, the picture that I chose um, for us to work from, however, is this magazine picture from Birds and Blooms that has a slaty skimmer, a nice big dragonfly, for us to really um, get into some details on here. So, um, when I'm going to draw something like this, I am figuring out the angles of the wings and sketching those in there lightly with a pencil. Um, I have my, my head, my thorax, which might be maybe a little bit off, and this angle of, the, of his um, abdomen there is really important. All right, so I'm going to um, begin using the Prismacolor, the Prismacolor pencil to kind of block in, and hopefully you'll be able to see that a little better. So remember that the Prismacolor pencil is the one that's not going to move when we add water to it. That would be the watercolor pencils that we will add later. So anything that I want not to move, I will do with um, this Prismacolor pencil. some of the designs in here on his body. We'll, we'll be adding some a little bit of color with the watercolor pencils. But anything that we don't want to move, we want this black to stay here, so we'll use the Prismacolor on that. Dragonflies are fascinating. They are um, able to fly, able to use their wings separately, the front wings versus the back wings, and so they're able to hover, go backwards. Um, I, I like it when I'm on a tube or in a kayak, when a dragonfly um, comes and kind of uses me like a giant bait pile because he's going to capture his carnivore. He's going to capture any bugs that might be bothering me, sweat bees or stable flies or um, mosquitoes. So I like to, I like to have dragonflies around me when I'm on the river or on the lake. Some of these mouth parts and things are so, so tiny that 
We're just going to give a little indication. All right. I'm going to get a little bit of color in here. I see some greens, some really light greens. Um, with the watercolor pencils, you can just use just use them lightly, and the white of the paper will make your your tints, your pastels for you. I'm seeing a little bit of orangish color here, which could add in when orange and green mix. We're going to get some sort of neutral, which might help us with that little brown right there. His eyes look to me kind of a rusty brown. So I might add some orange and then a little brown. Could add some green up there. Lots of metallic kinds of things going on. All righty. Remember to use our little handy dandy sock in case we want to change color. And then we'll just squirt a little water in there. Remember that that black is not going to move because that is the Prismacolor pencil, so we don't have to worry about losing our blacks on there. Um, for the wings, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and I'm just going to use an ink pen to do some of this veining on here. Just, just any ink pen should work pretty well, even if you... Um, we can add some more black over the top of that. I should have used a black. This this is a blue, but it, it doesn't. It's not going to matter too much. I'm going to go back to my um, handout and try to figure out some of these wing veins. They have kind of very specific... And I'll, I'll just begin to show you these. I won't finish those all today, but um, you can see in the picture when you look carefully that there's all this kinds of um, netting. Looks like netting. So it's going to be things that look something like this. Top of the wing is really important. There's, um, I think that there is some sort of, um, I don't know, instrument or something in there, something to do with this little spot in their wings that helps them to balance. <clears throat> I read one article that said that scientists don't really even actually know how dragonflies fly at, so maybe you can be the scientist that figures that out, or the artist that figures that out. And then I, what I would do is go back in here and make some of your netting places a little more pronounced. If you look carefully there there's there's some different shapes in there, kind of abstract shapes. And you don't have to do each one exactly like it is in the in the image as long as it kind of begins to make sense with with the picture. Some of these dragonflies do get to be pretty large and so you when you're looking at them carefully you can see 
you can see all of these wing areas. I'm going to just lightly indicate some of these. Another drawing is uh, how much time are you willing to spend concentrating on what it really looks like? If I were doing something like this at home, I would probably um, come back to it later when I feel fresher. When it's something intricate like this, I don't do it all in, that, all in one setting. I might come back to it. And because I don't really understand what this plant is, I'm not recognizing this plant, I'm going to kind of change it and just make it be um, some kind of stem. A lot of times they are, are perched on a, like a cattail stem or a leaf or your paddle when you're kayaking. I don't know why, they seem to like the paddles a lot. And then I'll just color that sort of a green. Well, I won't finish all the wings today, but you kind of get the idea. Um, and and so I might spend um, the rest of my book doing different types of damselflies and dragonflies. Um, just so that I can have some practice doing those. The next drawing that we're going to do is a frog. And I have a nice handout for you of a bullfrog. And I worked on that. I worked it up as a pencil sketch on the front of one of my little books. Um, and then when I looked through my references uh, to find one to, to draw, I noticed that I was taking pictures of just the backs of frogs, which aren't as fun to draw. So I did find a picture of a um, poison dart frog, and those are super fun and will be, I thought, more fun to do. So I began to sketch out the shape of this guy. And just like in the handout, I started out with ovals, an oval for his leg here, and an oval for the top of the leg, and just kind of continue to look at the picture and work out where those toes are. I'm thinking that these are, and I'm not positive, but I think they may be a type of tree frog because of the little suction pads on their feet that allow them to really hang on. We'll figure out his markings. I do want to try something that I haven't really tried. So this is kind of a guess. I'm going to um, use the Prismacolor pencil, which has wax in it, and see if we can get a little bit of shine. So I'm looking to see shiny spots. These have a little bit of wax. They might They might work for us. We'll see. It's an experiment. Things that are alive almost always have that shiny spot in their eye because their eye is wet. And so the light reflects from it. So we need some black watercolor and some red watercolor. And we'll figure out where his colors are here. And begin to add some pigment that we can that we can wet and make it move around. So right now I'm using the watercolor pencil, not the Prisma color. Because we are gonna try to paint this guy.
And with these watercolor pencils, the more pigment you put down dry, the more wet pigment you'll have. If you go light with it, then you're going to get a light color. If you apply it heavier, you'll get a more vibrant color. Fill in just like you would with regular colored pencils. And try to leave a little less there where I want that shine to be. And back here he looks like he's kind of wearing swimming trunks. would be fun to do a whole series of these tree frogs. They're such cool shapes to, to draw. And once in a while you can find a zoo that has uh, an aquarium full of these guys. They're pretty fun to draw from. It's always more fun to draw from life. It's harder but it's more satisfying and I don't know, your um, artwork has a, a certain freshness to it when you're working from, from life rather than from images. But for practicing, photographs are, are great. Great way to go. And of course, you could find images online too that you can that you can draw. Well, let's see what kind of colors we can get in this when we add the water. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the red first. Make sure my brush is clean. Get something nice. Red pigment in there. brush and then go into that black. Be really careful in that eye area. I want to leave a little bit of little bit of light there. I think the, the trickiest thing about watercolor is remembering to leave whites. I think that pencil might be working a little bit, that Prismacolor pencil, leaving us a little bit of
these water pens have usually a pretty nice tip on them so that you can get into these fine areas like I'm having a really fine nice brush and so much easier than dipping into water I think I think it will help you with your water learning watercolor this way And there we go. And there's our frog. Okay, so let's try a woof. And this time I'm going to draw directly from the handouts just because I think this, this is a really awesome handout. Um, this came from a book called The Wonders of Nature Sketchbook. And Michael Monroe is um, the illustrator of that. This time we are going to be using our, um, remember that this paper was where we did our value sketch. This time we're going to be using our Prismacolor pencils. We're going to use the black and the white in order to, to get this image of the wolf. So we'll follow right along with the handout which asks us to draw this circular shape at the beginning and a kind of a triangle at the side and a, an oval for the top of the muzzle and a smaller oval for the bottom of the muzzle and if your um if your shapes aren't as exactly you can see my ovals a little fatter here um remember that not all wolves look the same either you know, so um, as long as you kind of have them in the right place, it should work for you. So on number two, we draw a straight line to make that brow line for the woof. And then a straight line over that muzzle. And this just works so nicely to come down and um, make that muzzle area and then the other line that it asks for is this curved line. And I'm going to change my oval. I don't think I have it right. There we go. That nice curved line down there to make the throat. Um, and then we go to number three. And we're adding this line. And kind of a, a shape down here. Looks like a, almost like a heart shape there. And then in number four, we are adding on to the ear a little bit, making that be more curved. Putting that fold in the ear. And then adding this small, look how small that is, that small little shape for the eye. Okay, so we'll go on to number five. And in this one, we draw a narrow little triangle here so that we're seeing the inside of his mouth while he's howling. We're going to add two teeth, those bottom, Those bottom ones there and then we're going to begin to add a little fur here we're going to figure out some of our lights and our darks and then we can begin to look at this final image where we're going to be adding some white to our Notice that white that's going to separate the dark of the wolf from the background. And on the top of the ear, there's a little white, lots of white inside that ear. Remember, we're letting that, um, that brown show through for our middle, for our middle value. 
finish the bottom of his nose here would be pretty dark. And start putting in a little bit of that darker gray. Draw the eye. You can begin to see just a little bit of pupil in there. And um, we're going to notice that we want to color with this color pencil in the direction that the fur would be growing. white in there. Oops. Now we broke. Huh. And then lots of white on his nose area here. Around the eye. technical difficulties because my pencil broke. Might use my white water cover. Start kind of comes down. One thing about using the white is the black goes over it really nicely. Just keep adding that fur in the direction that it's growing. You might notice some of this around the neck. If you have a dog, you can use that to help you model that. that white. Um, not all roofs are colored the same. It's like not all roofs are have the same size muzzle or uh, individuals just like people. Make sure I get some white down here because we are going to add that cool background that we see. Might even use a little bit of yellow here in his eye. Mm. And then for these background trees, um, we're just going to scribble in the shapes of these trees. So we draw about where it is and those branches with those needles just kind of scribbled in like a like a little shorthand. They look 
we look um, they look harder than what they are what we have to be careful of is that we don't make them all equally distant we are pattern makers and nature is rarely Rarely has an even pattern. Might have some trees closer together, some trees further apart. Some of them might look a little um, lighter than others so that they look further off in the distance. A little bit of at atmospheric perspective. Even bring that down. And there he is, your, your wolf. <laughs> 